Hello everyone, this is Polaris or Surreality here, and today, uh, as I was reminded to yesterday <laughs> in game, I'm doing a Slayer tier list. Uh, now, as you can tell, I have the icons for all the karmas in the game right here, but I'm just going to be focusing on Slayers right now. So, actually, let me just move all of the breakers to the right side so I don't have to deal with them. Alright, perfect. So. We're just going to kind of start it off, we'll start it off by the first, like, Slayers as they were released. So, first up we have Bow. Um, I'm going to put it into S tier. Also, I will say for now, none of them are ordered in terms of the actual tier that they're in. So if there's multiple in one tier, they're not really going to be ordered. But Bow is clearly an S tier Karma. I mean, it still can do a lot. It still does insane damage. Raining Arrow is still unreactable poke. Um, Spirit Arrow still does kind of actually insane break, um, especially for air peel and stuff like that. And you have an invincible shift attack basically, um, one of the best shifts in the game, especially for a Slayer. Uh, and again, you just have really good damage, and especially with the stamina buffs recently, um, Bo kind of struggled a little bit to 100 to 0, but now it doesn't really struggle at all. Um, so yeah, and it also has a really good hard tap conversion going into breakers and stuff like that if you need to. So yeah, really good stuff all together, very solid. Even though there's been some nerfs to like the Raining Arrow, like they nerfed the break a little bit, but it's still, honestly that's not the part that matters the most. I think it's the damage and the fact that it's unreactable, that's the biggest part. So ha despite that nerf, hasn't really changed that much, even with the stamina. It made the commands a little bit worse, and they did like kind of really nerf the ult too. So I would say out of all the things that the ult 2 is definitely um, one of the biggest nerfs that it got. And I've seen a lot of people drop ult 2 and go to ult 1, which, you know, makes sense. But overall, still an insane karma. Very, I don't necessarily want to say it's easy to use because I've seen new players, especially pickups, uh, bow and not do as well. Because I think you do want to run salvo on bow or else you're going to miss out on a lot of damage. You don't have to, and I've seen people work without it, but you do miss out on a lot of damage if you don't do that. But again, very top, uh, anyway. Um, then we'll put Witch, um, I'll probably do Witch, like, I'm thinking maybe here. I probably don't even need this tier to be honest. Let me delete this one. This is probably fine. Um, Witch is, it's okay right now. Obviously it still has, uh, it still offers utility with Black Hole and Ice Wall. Um, and Blizzard being a thing that might be more prevalent, Triple Lightning being guaranteed and stuff like that. It does have some stuff going for it, but at the end of the day, it still takes a lot of stamina to do anything. And your damage output is comparatively a lot less high um, to some of the other Slayers, especially ones that you'll see in S and A tier. It just doesn't even, it, it can't compete in terms of the damage output. Um, so kind of because of that, it puts Witch at a lower uh, thing and again they've nerfed a lot of the skills especially like which is best skill was coe and regardless of whether it was overpowered or not nerfing coe did kind of nerf the whole kit and then especially nerfing ult 2 now not being a guaranteed catch is again was it deserved yeah maybe but it was an extreme nerf and not only does it not get a guaranteed catch it also doesn't break purple armor skills like at all it, the ult 2 cast does not have like any break at all um, and they might have actually, I don't think they nerfed the break on the actual command attacks in ult 2, but honestly the most important thing was probably the activation compared to anything else. So it really um, hindered Witch, and now I've seen a lot of people switch back to ult 1. So there's, a, there's just a lot of, um, a lot of Witch's most powerful tools were nerfed, arguably a lot. Even Mana Ray was nerfed for no reason. Like... They nerfed, they, they stopped it from going through walls, even though that was the whole point of it. Like, that was literally intentional. I don't know why they removed that, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, anyway, so then, uh, I, I mean, that's basically all I have to say about it. It it takes a lot of setup for some of the damage, so, yeah. Alright, next, uh, so after Bow and Witch were released, we had DS and DS... I'm probably going to put it in S tier, I think. There's some contention for whether it deserves A tier or S tier. It could be either way. I think if you're talking about, like, solo queue, um, 
I mean, honestly, I think it does fine in solo queue or duo queue, to be honest. But um, I'll put it in S for now because I do think I I have seen it start to kind of fall off because of the other slayers in S tier doing more damage. But there are some setups that let DS do a lot of damage. Again, be, I think actually the biggest thing was the fact that um, uh, the Awakening skill on DS was nerfed. And they might buff it again, I'm not really sure. But if they do buff it again, I think DS will be completely fine then. Because that skill actually allowed DS to do pretty insane damage. And right now DS still can do pretty good damage. Um, for one, unlike which, it can 100 to 0 purely by itself quite easily. Also, comboing it with it is just easier. Its tab attack is amazing, stuff like that. Um, and it has still high damage skills. You still have rend, which exists. You still have a good shift attack, good dash attack, um, that can break breakers and stuff like that. Moon Slash is still a command that can do six, seven k damage, depending on how much crit and stuff you have. Um, and having a command that does high damage is always good to have because it, it basically DS arguably is always going to be uh, the easiest one to team combo with. Like DS is the karma that is super easy to team combo with because the team combo is you just moon slash and especially if you get two people like that's going to do an insane amount of damage probably force a couple rage breaks like it can be pretty insane um and then of course you still have your slayer that has two yellow endurance skills which is still kind of absurd and in the case of spinning strike it literally like breaks some breaker skills still so yeah it's still got a lot going for it it, again, it, some people call it a half breaker, and to some extent it is, because it does have a lot of stuff that it just has high break in. And it also has very little end lag on a lot of stuff, which is also something you'll find is very common, I think, with a lot of the S tier uh, slayers. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Damage was nerfed a little bit because of weakening of some skills and commands, but overall I think it's still pretty high. Um, especially with the max stam buff, like, DS doesn't have to ever run out of stamina, basically. Especially if you run the Awakening skill, or if you even want to run Destiny Restraints, um, although you don't need to, but like you can make DS work just fine. It, it has a lot going for it, and it still has good poke. Does it use stamina now? Sure, but um, it's still really, really good poke. You just have to keep your stamina in mind. And considering your DS, you already have the access to the highest movement speed in the game, because both DS and Kunai have the access to the highest movement speed in the game, so you don't really have to worry about like, oh no, this breaker's gonna chase me down. So. Yeah, that's probably my thoughts on that. Um, and I might, again, I might order these potentially, but yeah. So next up would then have been Hammer release and then Cannon right after. So for me right now, I'm going to put Cannon in A tier. Um, and the reason I'm putting Cannon in A tier specifically is because it's definitely like if you were solo queue, I'd probably put it in B tier, maybe even C tier. But if you're in a duo queue or just anybody who like, I guess if you have a solo queue teammate who's like really on point, you can get an insane amount of shit off this, like, uh, was it Dragon Breath or whatever, Flamethrower basically, and Ice Trap and Mist Trap, and it, it's just disgusting what you can do with this if you get the setups right. And speaking of team combos, whereas DS might be easier because it's literally just charge R and B. If you have skills available, Cannon is going to destroy any Karma, any Slayer on here when it comes to team combos because Dragon Breath and Ice Trap will. 100 to 0 you it will like if you are literally caught in a swordsman and the cannon player has if two people are caught in the swordsman and the cannon player has dragon breath ready like that's a rage break basically right there because it will kill you it will you can go in a training room literally right now i did it with like a level 3 cannon you can set the uh hp of the dummy to like 25k and you will most likely do 24k if not more damage and with the whole entire usage of the skill so, yeah, Cannon has the capacity to basically kill you at any time if the right circumstances are met, and I think that in it by itself is a pretty big threat and becomes a much bigger threat in duos. And also, whereas Witch, I think, was known as the utility uh, queen, I think Cannon actually has started to come on top of that, and I think obviously when Lightning Trap was a thing, it was, but even with that nerfed, you still have Ice Trap and Mist Trap, which is a very dominating thing. It literally disables certain skills from working. Any skill that is supposed to lock on or track, like it just doesn't work when you're in uh, Mist Trap, and now you can heal in Mist Trap as well, um, or you've been able to do that for a while, but there's just so much, well, actually, sorry, I should scratch that. You can't heal anymore. You used to be able to heal in Mist Trap, you can't heal anymore. You could use Sanctuary or something like that, but people would see that. 
so. But either way, very good utility, very high damage, Dragon Breath is insane. It does take setup. I think the shift attack goes higher. I don't know if it's just me, but I have a much harder time punishing the shift attack on cannon now. I don't know why. It feels like people go higher during the shift attack. Maybe that's just me. I mean, I think if you're sword or hammer, well, probably just sword because hammer has a slow one, but if you're sword, it's probably fine. And if you're fist, it's actually probably fine because you can also IC. Scythe is also, I think, actually pretty fine as well if you have Soul Taker up. But, um, yeah, I found it harder to punish with shield, but, again, that's just me. Um, but I think it deserves to be there. It's just its damage output is crazy. Again, it does take a lot of setup, and it's not an easy Slayer. I'd argue it's probably still one of the most difficult ones on here. Um, but if you can get it going, you just do insane damage. Alright, so next up would be Scythe, and then Orb. And Orb, unfortunately, I'm going to put down here. Um... Yeah, there's not much going for Orb right now. Unlike all the other Karmas, there are literally skills on this Karma that don't work. Like, one of the reasons I even have it down here is, like, it's already, it's an issue if you have skills that maybe aren't that strong or aren't really doing that much or aren't offering that much. It's another thing if your skills literally just don't work. Um, so, Orb has a lot of those issues. You have issues where, like, uh... Spirit Rain doesn't completely work because it, it knocks them down. Uh, they change it so that every hit knocks down, which means that if there's a window of opportunity, um, they can tech roll out of the Star Tempest or uh, of the Spirit Rain to avoid taking more damage. And I did slip in and say Star Tempest, which is also another skill that you can tech roll out of not only after you get hit by the balls, which basically means Star Tempest is a combo ender because you cannot follow up off of it, but you can also, in some cases, actually tech roll out before the balls even connect, which is where like 99% of the skill's damage comes from. So that skill literally just doesn't function sometimes. So you have, you know, Spirit Rain, which barely functions outside of Poke. You have Star Tempest, which basically doesn't function at all. You have Heartstopper, which is very, very strict to combo into now. Um, I will say the command uh, buff that they did for the LR thing, which by the way, you can thank me for that, I'm just saying, I, I reported that and told them that they should increase the speed dramatically, and then, the, and, and then they did, and I'm very happy about that. Of course, it doesn't really matter because there's other stuff, but um, uh, yeah, so Heartstopper, if you hesitate at all, you basically will never land it in combo, um, which kind of sucks. Uh, I think it is actually to some extent easier now that uh, the launch goes faster, so I think you can skill cancel out of it faster as well. Um, but yeah, so hard stopper, borderline, poke only, or somewhat if you time it right and you commit to it, you can use it in the combo. Uh, Dimension Leap, if you have Shadow Pull, yeah, sure, you can follow up off of it. If you don't, I've heard you can dash attack off of it. I think even if you can, the timing is going to be very tight, and if you mess up at all, then you just don't get a follow-up, and the Dimension Leap is also basically a combo ender. Then you have the Awakening skill, which, uh, similar to what happened to Lightning Trap, does absolutely nothing and does no damage, uh, unless you center it on the person, which it doesn't break them anyway, so they're just going to walk around and take the least amount of damage that the skill could possibly offer. So it's a terrible Awakening skill. They made it go from like pretty good to literally trash, arguably the worst uh, Awakening skill in the game. Um, and then you have Communion, which is kind of like you have to run it. I mean, I think some people still don't run it, but I think you should run it if you are playing Aura at all. Like, you probably want to run Communion. Because, again, another issue which I talked about with Witch is Orb's command damage fucking sucks ass. It's really bad. It's, it's bad. Communion makes it okay, um, but it's just not great. And its stamina regen for Orb is really bad because a lot of the skills that maybe would have given you the most amount of stamina regen, example being like Star Tempest, um, you can't even use because, again, uh, they can tech roll out. So tech roll screwed over Orb a lot. Um, basically disabled half of its kit um, and made its combo game a lot more difficult and rigid. And again, it's skills a lot of them have had their damage nerf and then the command damage can't really make up for it outside of communion so it it, it just doesn't offer much and at, at this point it basically does what witch does except it offers no form of utility so in, in a sense it basically does bow and witch's job except worse because it offers less utility than either one does and less range than either one can offer either um 
yeah there's just like orb doesn't offer that much that i would say like okay but like can't witch and bow do the same thing if not better you have spirit rain but then you also have raining arrow which i would argue is actually better and then you have skills like heart stopper and i'm like isn't that just fireball and then you have like skills again you have heart stopper which or uh star tempest which does nothing and dimension leap i guess is your only unique and also potentially good skill and shadow pull maybe but you can't really get much with that so that's about where i think about that and then after orb was released you had shield and then of course kunai and kunai i am very much also going to put up here um i think kunai has potentially the highest skill cap in the game out of all the slayers um, it is kind of another melee slayer, and unlike DS, it doesn't really have much endurance on a lot of its skills. It used to have some endurance on skills like uh, Flame Strike and stuff like that. Um, but mainly, what boosted Kunai up here, one was a random change that they did to Blink Kunai at one point in time, where they basically made it insta cast, which is amazing. It doesn't work in Destruction, which I found out unfortunately, but uh, in regular 2v2 and other game modes, uh, you can insta cast blink kunai and what does this mean it means that blink kunai can basically shut down every single range slayer uh if they if bow or cannon or witch or orb are in the air or on the ground and they have any form of end lag the blink kunai will catch them and beat them and launch them and now the kunai player has a combo like blink kunai in itself is an insane skill it's very powerful kind of hard to react to in some cases and it, it just rewards so much, and it, it does pretty decent damage. It can crit for like 2, 3k or something like that. Probably more on a Slayer. Maybe it can get like 3.5, 4k, who knows. Um, but what complements this now, of course, is that you can now get um, a uh, the, the Awakening skill, which is uh, Lightning Strike. And Lightning Strike by itself, especially the higher you are in the air, can do all the way up to like... 4, 5, 6k damage even in some cases, depending on how many hits you get. Um, and that basically means that, especially if you have a Slayer like Bow, Witch, or Orb in the air, or even Cannon, I guess, and you Blink Kunai them in the air, break them in the air, you can double jump off the Blink Kunai or something, or just go immediately into the Lightning Strike. And it's already pretty hard to peel, because you're basically teleporting into the air, and then now diving straight back down to the ground from like a further distance away, so it's harder to punish. Um, and you're basically in that whole scenario, you're basically getting a guaranteed like 7, 8k, maybe 9k damage in like 5 seconds if you do it right. Potentially even more if you like really sweet spot and get all the hits. Um, and like that's just insane. Like Kunai literally right now has like the highest burst damage possible and you can use it both on the ground and on the air, which is absolutely insane. It gives Kunai a lot of flexibility. Um, Kunai also has a lot more flexibility because it for some reason has a command that doesn't take any stamina and is poke and gives you red endurance not like high red but like enough that you can tank pokes so specifically if you do double jump on kunai and then you do left click it throws out two kunai and the double jump uses stamina but then the left click you do doesn't use stamina and in fact what makes it better is it doesn't like stop you from regenerating stamina like a scythe right click does but it actually allows you to regenerate as you throw out the two kunai so you're literally like doing like a bow poke except you're regenerating stamina which is crazy because only skills normally allow you to do that so kunai arguably has like the best poke command in the game and again since you're double jumping you're constantly refreshing your endurance so you can do this over and over and over again and as long as you give like a tiny bit of a gap, you realistically won't lose any stamina because by the time you land from the double jump, you're already regening stamina, and then you'll probably regen enough stamina that you had lost during the double jump. So you just keep doing it over and over and over again, and you basically run out of no stamina, and it's it's crazy. And you keep the momentum uh, every time you do the double jump left click. It's only the right click that stops the momentum, but the left click keeps the momentum of the double jump, um, which makes it really good. I've literally beaten or broken bow players who are trying to poke trade with me as I double jump left click because their bow shots not all of them connect to me and even the ones that do I just constantly refresh my endurance meanwhile I'm hitting them with LMBs maybe I burn their shift one time I see them shift and then I just blink kunai them and then they're gone so um, so it's kind of insane uh, ult 2 got buffed because it doesn't require any stamina cost which is kind of insane and also might still be an insta catch although I think it depends how close you are to them 
uh, when they activate it. And then you have ult 1 as well, which still does an insane amount of damage, dude. That shit still does like 5, 6, I think I can, I've seen it do 7k, especially on a Slayer, maybe even 8k. Like, it will do an insane amount of damage, um, and you still can get follow-ups. Um, honestly, all the kunai skills are still pretty good. Uh, Dimension Slash is really weird, it has crazy vertical tracking. Um, again, Blink Kunai, you have the Awakening skill, which does insane damage now. Uh, Flame Strike is still pretty okay. I like using Lightning Drop. Because it's an air grab that's five frames fast. You have lightning ambush, which allows you to air shift, which is still crazy. Um, there's just a lot of things that Kunai has that can counter a lot of the ranged slayers. It's still more technical though, and it has a lot of inconsistencies with its combo game, especially in terms of its air commands are very susceptible to dropping. Uh, but um, outside of that, it's quite strong and. In some cases, I can see it even stronger than DS. Um, I I could I, I probably right now I feel like it's stronger than DS in some cases. Even though the, the one issue that Kunai has is it's very solo combo oriented. So unlike DS, it doesn't really offer much in terms of team combo. Like if you catch two people, the Kunai player is probably just going to separate uh, one of them. Is probably what's going to happen because all of Kunai's skills, for the most part, right? You think lightning drop, you think lightning strike. Um, they all kind of uh, bring the opponent towards the kunai player in some way or just you know repel them in some direction like the the, the kunai player kind of just takes them with them uh or takes the enemy with them and so it's very more solo combo oriented like the most you could do as a team combo realistically is go for like the wind shuriken and throw that which if you get really close can do a lot of damage but also it's rng so not really recommended all the time unless you have enough time to do it um but outside that uh, Kunai still does a really good overall, and let's see, if I had to order how I currently felt about these Karmas, I'd probably say, actually I kind of like this order from left to right, it's still very close though I feel like for all of these ones, um, especially because like you still have crit slash stuff which I've seen still fuck over bow players pretty hard, especially with ult 2, and I've even used ult 1 in some ways to actually fuck over all sorts of players, bow or not. Um, although I think Kunai does a much better job than DS right now, at least with shutting down range karma, so I'd probably have it higher. I mean, I could even see an argument actually for like this, um, but I think bow's combo game is probably more consistent compared to Kunai's, so I'll probably keep it like here, but it's very, very close between these two. Like, I think Kunai and bow right now are really, really close. Uh, so, yeah could be either one of those but yeah this is probably how I feel and again DS in theory could move down here in some cases but I think for most people because I also don't run like the most meta build I don't even run spinning strike half the time if I know if I did I like I probably could get away with a lot more I, I think DS can still get away with a lot um, so yeah I'd probably uh, have it like this I think um, yeah I think I'm pretty happy with this and uh, yeah, so this is my Slayer tier list for Season 9. Um, this is how I feel at the moment. And um, again, stuff might change in the future, especially if there's any more balance changes. And if the new Karma, which we already know exists, gets released. Although that's a breaker, so it won't be on this list. But might have to create a new breaker tier list um, in case that happens. But uh, we'll see... Uh, you know how that goes, and again, if there's any balance changes to any of the awakening skills, that can change a lot, um, or to even their base skills. So we'll see. And actually, kind of just as a final comment, like Orb, it literally, if they get rid of the tech roll stuff, I actually think Orb could go at least up to B tier, maybe up to A tier, but probably it would be B tier with which. So it'd probably be like here. This is if they remove tech roll, and this is if they have it. So. But that's basically about it. So again, hope you guys all enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.